Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps in the house and today we're going to be talking about Maus. That's right, the European squad that has just added Torzi and NBK in place of Rops and Acor. Obviously Cyclone has come on as a coach as well, previously coach of the Maus NXT, the Academy project. Now, the way we're going to approach this and the way I kind of approach uh, roster moves in general is I'll look at the problems that existed with the initial roster. Uh, and then we will look at the changes, see if they've addressed those problems and see what new issues or new question marks have kind of been raised with the new iteration of the roster. Uh, the first person that I want to talk about is probably obvious to most people, and that is going to be Acor. Now, this is Acor's event history with Maus, and as you can see, it's nothing particularly special, not much to write home about. Um, honestly, not good enough for an AWPA. Um, the kill differentials are poor in a lot of the events. The ratings are not good enough, often dropping below one, and even his best ratings are coming in closed qualifiers. You know, another closed qualifier, another closed qualifier. You know, a tier two event, Snow Sweet Snow. Obviously, his other good rating was Flashpoint 3, but the whole team was good at Flashpoint 3. And plus 18 kill differentials over 11 maps isn't really fantastic as an AWPA. And as we can see, his worst ratings came in the biggest and most important events. It was the Major, it was EPL, it was I Am Cologne. You know, a lot of his worst ratings came in the most important events. And it just wasn't really good enough for Acor um, as a primary AWPA in Tier 1. Um, Amanek's probably posting better numbers than this, and Amanek was not good enough to be a primary AWPA for G2. So if you're trying to hang around the top 10, top 20, this can't be your primary AWPA stats. It's also worth comparing him to his time in Mad Lions. I mean, just look at this. It's like a totally different player. We've got a 1.3 at Blast, pretty stacked event. We've got a 1.24 at a Tier 2. We've got a 1.39 at another Tier 2. But he's like farming Tier 2s. He's posting pretty good numbers in general. Even when they're going to like blasts and stuff like this, he's posting pretty decent numbers. Yeah, some not so great tournaments here, but he just seemed like a completely different player with Mad Lions. He's posting way better numbers, way better in general kill differentials, and just looked like a completely different player. So the removal of Acor is not a surprising one. And, you know, no spoiler, I think it's probably going to be a good move, but we'll address the Torsi edition a little bit later in the video. Now, the next problem that was in the Mao's camp was actually, I think, Dexter as a leader. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about him as a shot caller and an in-game leader in that sense, but I'm talking about him as a leadership figure within the squad. Um, as you can see here, this is from the ROPS Top 20 piece. Um, this is from the kind of interview sections of the piece. But he basically talks about how, whilst Dexter's a good caller, he's not the leadership personality that Carrigan was. And this really was an issue for this iteration of the Mao's roster. And it's kind of understandable. The most experienced player on that roster outside of Dexter was Rops in Tier 1. And Rops has only really been around for a few years, and he's still a relatively young guy. Outside of that, you've got Frozen and Bemis, who are both even younger than Rops and have been in tier one even less time than Rops has, particularly Bemis is basically brand new. He's only 18 years old. He's a really, really young guy. Um, and then even Acor's not like hugely old, not hugely experienced in tier one. I think Dexter was probably an issue in this sense because he's not a super experienced tier one leadership figure. And I think this probably, as Rops states in his interviews, it's very believable to think that this probably affected Maus in a negative way and this was part of the reason they kind of suffered in 2021 and didn't have the most successful year as a team. Now a final point I kind of want to make about some of the issues in Maus in 2021 is just the fact that they seemed to not quite add up to be the sum of their parts. Frozen and Rops both had pretty good years in 2021 you know, some good events statistically, lots of fragging, lots of good maps, particularly obviously Rops made it into the HLTV top 20. Um, no word on Frozen yet, still got some time left to go in the top 20. I think this series really kind of illustrates and is a bit of a microcosm for Mouse's year. As we can see, this is the elimination series at the major Stockholm. This is in the um, 
legend stage so not not the full playoffs but it's not the challenger stage of the event basically mouths need to win this series to stay alive in the tournament and as we can see they don't they lose 2-1 but they lose in really narrow fashion in overtime um on vertigo as you can see rops has an off map here and kind of had an off series in general maybe if he turns up Maus can get over the line and this is what I mean Maus came close like this in a lot of events where their elimination series would be close or there'd be an overtime map somewhere that could have gone either way that would have seen them progress further in an event and if you actually look at the players in the years they had Beavis was okay this year nothing spectacular we'll look at him a little bit later um Frozen and Rops both had good years you know, Acor didn't, but we've already discussed that. And Dexter's the in-game leader. Didn't match up statistically to how he did in his Renegades days. But, you know, playing in EU versus the Oceanic scene, it's night and day. So it's understandable. Like, you feel like Maus should have been able to be a little bit more successful this year off the back of their star duo of Frozen and Rops than they were ever able to. And this series is kind of a microcosm of that. They're not far off. They do okay in the series. They maybe could win it if something goes a little bit different on a certain map and on another day, but they never quite seem to get over the line and kind of add up to any more than the sum of their parts. And that was a big problem, I think, for Maus throughout the year. Now we have to look at what Maus brought in and what that does for them as a team. Now, Torzi is the first guy I want to talk about. Obviously, a very highly touted prospect. Putting up numbers on Mao's NXT was putting up Mao's uh, numbers, sorry, back when he was on Budapest 5. Obviously not even quite competing at Tier 2 most of the time for the Budapest 5, but he's absolutely dumping on the opposition that he is playing against. And then coming into Mao's NXT, he's getting a little bit more legit Tier 1 experience. Um, some of these Mortar Vibes knockout series like here and here, Mao's made top 4 in knockout series 3 and 4 with... Torzi putting up some pretty big numbers. Now, yes, this seems on a very surface level like an upgrade for Acor in terms of form. Because Torzi is putting up good form, he was excellent through the We Play Academy League seasons and in their LAN finals. He was excellent in these sort of tier two events that Mao's NXT did take part in. Obviously, Torzi's form last year seems like it was a lot better than Acor's. However, was Torzi potentially the kind of focal point of this Mao's NXT team, whereas Acor wasn't the focal point of Mao's proper? Yeah, there is an argument to be made there. And I think in general, Torzi is still an unproven prospect. Yes, he looks pretty good. He got a lot of tier two experience last year, and he is kind of poised to make that step up. But actually making the step up is a different prospect. And I think it remains to be seen exactly how well he's going to do at tier two. Do I personally think he is going to do well? Yes, I actually do. I think he got enough experience in sort of tier two. He's looked good every time he's made the step up. So if we look here, you know, going from this Salamander team into Budapest 5, from Budapest 5 into Mount's NXT, each time he's made the step up, he's been able to adapt and adjust. So that's obviously good signs. And looking at some of his inter uh, interviews from the We Play Academy League season... He seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. He seems confident. He seems mature. He seems pretty self-sufficient. So I think he's potentially got the personality that is also well suited to making that step up to tier one. So he's obviously a question mark, but I'm quietly confident about Torzi going into next year. Now, obviously, a very, very big piece of news was the signing of MBK to Mouse. This kind of came out of left field. I wasn't seeing too many rumblings about this until it was reported kind of a few days before the move actually went down. Um, I had not seen this move suggested anywhere. I'd not really seen it discussed. Like I say, it kind of comes out of nowhere. But actually, looking at this in the context of Mouse's problems and in the context of the rest of the roster that they have, this seems like a really, really intelligent move from Mouse. One of Mouse's biggest problems in the team is they're incredibly young and inexperienced. They have Torzi, no tier one experience. Bemus, limited tier one experience. Frozen, still pretty young, doing well at tier one, but not exactly full of many lands and, and such at tier one. And then Dexter, even Dexter doesn't really have huge amounts of experience at tier one. Adding NBK seems like a bit of a masterstroke in terms of getting a proven winner in. 
just got his profile up here so that we can have a look many many events won two times major winner been in the top 20 players list a few times he's been there he's done that he knows how to hang at a tier one level and very importantly he was always a guy putting teams together and building rosters within that french scene he has the nickname of the kingmaker because he was often the linchpin in those french shuffles and he was kind of the guy putting together the premier french team and then anybody who didn't make it into his team was kind of put together into the leftovers team obviously that didn't happen towards the end of mbk's time in sort of some of those french lineups but what i'm trying to get at here is that he clearly has some experience in looking at pieces putting them together and trying to build a team out of them at least being involved in that process and so i think that's going to be very important for Maus, especially with such a young roster especially with a roster that doesn't have so much experience and as i mentioned previously a roster that doesn't have a leadership figure because dexter isn't that according to robs in summary I think MBK is going to obviously be a firepower downgrade on ROPS because that is the guy that MBK is essentially swapping in for. However, I do think that his leadership qualities and his experience are going to be so, so important to such a young and inexperienced team that I actually overall, looking at ROPS Acor swapped for MBK Torzi, I don't see it as a huge downgrade potentially on how Torzi does. It could actually end up for Mao specifically being more what they needed to get more out of this team. I know I talked about them being less than the sum of their parts. Maybe this is what they need to be more than the sum of their parts. Now, I'm going to go on a little bit of a downer now and talk about BMAS. Um, I know this is not somebody obviously that's been brought in, so it's a bit strange to talk about it here. But I think it's relevant when we look at MBK being brought in especially in place of ROPS, because like I say, that's definitely a firepower downgrade. BMAS is going to need to step up and do more in the fragging and numbers department than he has been for Mouse. Obviously, he's got some good events. Flashpoint 3 was good, but the whole team was kind of good there. He's not terrible. He generally posts sort of 1.1. He was actually pretty good at the major, 1.11, 0.7 KPR. That's pretty solid statistics at a major, at a stacked event, at such an important event. So I think Bemis definitely has some potential to get a little bit busier in the fragging department. And as we can see, he's definitely improved from the start of his time. He's definitely putting numbers up more consistently. So the trajectory of development is definitely there. The thing is, Bemis is now probably going to have to step up and if not be a second star, maybe Torzi and Frozen can get that done. He definitely, I think, is going to have to step in as the middleman. I'm not sure NBK is going to be able to get it done in the fragging department anymore. I think him and Dexter are going to have to form more of the supportive element of this Mouse lineup. And Bemis needs to kind of be that middle guy who can do a bit of both. He can fill spots on the map. He can take up some of the bitch roles. But also when push comes to shove, he needs to be able to do a bit of fragging and kind of be that middleman who, when one of the main stars isn't having a good day, Bemis can step up and, and fill some of the fragging numbers. This is something we're going to need to see from Bemis, and I think it's possible. I think his trajectory shows us that he could do it. Will he do it? I think that's probably the biggest question mark of all for me, actually, in this Mouse lineup, is how exactly does Bemis develop, and how does he fit within the roles of the team? It seems obvious where he's got to fit for Mouse to work. Whether he can do that, I don't know. The final point I want to make, uh, and I saved this for the end of the video because I think it probably is the least important, is Cyclone coming in as coach. Apologies if I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Um, the reason I think it's the least important is because I think Maus have so many question marks and had so many issues last year that weren't necessarily related to coaching that I think bringing in a different coach was not the top of the priority list for Maus. What I will say is I do like this move from Maus to be utilizing the Academy roster and the Academy project. I think obviously bringing Torzi through, bringing Cycrone through, this shows that they're willing to really invest in and utilize that Academy structure. And I think it's great for a team like Maus who clearly don't have the most money. I don't think they're scraping the bottom of the barrel and looking behind the sofa for pennies but they're clearly not going to be able to compete with the very biggest orgs in terms of buyouts and salaries and things like this. 
So I think it makes a lot of sense for them to be utilizing the academy structure. The other aspect of bringing Cyclone in, and I think this probably hints towards a little something from Maus, is that they potentially will be looking to bring through more of their academy squad into the main roster if this main roster doesn't work out. I can see Dexter potentially being on the chopping block because I don't think he's done enough to kind of say I am a tier one IGL that you want to keep around on the roster. I think NBK potentially or Bemis could also find their heads on the chopping block depending on how this roster goes. And I think players like Exertion from the Academy roster who's shown a lot of potential and a lot of skill and a lot of potential firepower and maybe even bringing in the leader from Mal's NXT. I can't pronounce his name. I don't know how to say it. See you. See, see you. No. That guy. See, see you. Sui. Sui. Um, they could potentially be looking to bring in other players from the Academy roster. And having the coach from Academy already there, kind of molding the main team, it means these transitions from academy should be smoother and so i think males are taking a very long-term approach which i really really like actually with the planning and the signings for this roster they're looking at the long term they know this roster isn't going to bang immediately no matter what signings they made this roster was never going to bang immediately so i like the longer term approach that they've taken i think males um have shown themselves to be a pretty well managed and organized organization and I think this will only continue in the future. I like the approach that they're taking. You know the drill, boys and girls. If you liked the video, bam, on that like button and tell all your mates, all that stuff. Uh, and if you didn't, jog on.